We're learning more about the events that led to Brandon Clyke receiving a sentence of at least two decades in prison. That happened yesterday when a judge gave him 22 to 40 years for half a dozen charges, a third offense of domestic violence, torture, and criminal sexual conduct among them. In reviewing Clyke's criminal history, we also found charges including false imprisonment from Wisconsin dated a year before his arrest in Michigan. The Marquette County prosecutor told us the victim was in a three-year relationship with Clyke and his office was able to roll in those previous crimes against her to bolster the case that put him behind bars. Assistant Prosecutor Haley Kimball Dexter served as co-counsel for this case and describes how it all started. With him, you know, the first time punching her in the face and denying that he did that, you know, kind of gaslighting her, manipulating her to believe that, oh, he didn't actually punch her in the face. He had just slapped her as if that's better, right? Um, but he, you know, engaged in these common power and control manipulation tactics that domestic abusers uh, employ in order, in order to control their victims. And so the abuse escalated over time. A year after that, the abuse escalated to a near deadly level with an expert testifying the evidence of strangulation was the worst she had ever seen. The prosecutor says despite how helpless current victims of abuse can feel, they can get out. The prosecutors described the women in the case as a brave and at this and had this to say about victims who may be too afraid to seek help. Well, it's not going to get better if they don't. It's it's still likely to get worse. The, the, this. This is patterned behavior that does not change without intervention. I would I would also add that there there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, the victim, you know, we had a lot of contact with her during this case. She was really struggling for a long time, as as we expect that somebody who's been some through something traumatic like this would. Um, and she's still dealing with it to to a degree, but. Um, but she's doing a lot better and she seems happy and she's in a new relationship and it's, um, you know, it's sort of the happy ending that, that we hope for, um, for the victim. So they, you know, I think the takeaway is you, you can get out of this and there is hope and there is light on the other side. The prosecutors say victims of abuse can get in touch with the Women's Center, which can confidentially help create a safety plan to leave the relationship. It also can provide support counseling and a place to stay. They say if you feel like your life is in danger, call the police.